no, I don't always wear a seatbelt. Uh, I never wear a seatbelt, short journeys. 28% of drivers aged 18 plus don't always wear their seatbelt. On short journeys, like if I go to the petrol station near my house or the shop, I sometimes I can't be bothered to put it back on because I think it's such a short journey, I'm not going to pick up enough speed to go round the corner to have a bad crash. Even at slow speeds on roads you know well, with no seatbelt, you can still be seriously injured or killed. Because I'm a delivery driver, I'm, I'll be going from one street to another street, maybe next to each other, so it'd be on and off, on and off, on and off. So I don't feel like I have to wear one all the time. You are twice as likely to die in a crash if you don't wear a seatbelt. Sometimes I'm rushing around in my car, I'm going to the supermarket, I'm getting out to grab a few things, I jump back in, pop and get my dry cleaning. I don't really remember to put it on. During 2007, over 1,400 people were killed while in a car. 487 were not wearing a seatbelt. A lot of my journeys, or most of my journeys, are just sort of short journeys, sort of short trips. So as such, I don't really feel the need to wear it. Nearly 300 lives would have been saved if all car occupants had been wearing a seatbelt. Roughly, that's one life a day. For motorway journeys, I generally would wear a seatbelt because I have a longer time to remember. Um, but for shorter journeys, I usually forget. It isn't just crashes at high speeds that can cause serious injuries or death. My name's Richard Cuden. I work for the UK's Transport Research Laboratory and I specialise in looking at the causes of accidents and the causes of injuries that happen because of road traffic accidents. Seatbelts are a vital part of protecting people from injury and road crashes. People who don't wear seatbelts in the UK today are dying at speeds when they're travelling at 20, 30, perhaps 40 miles an hour, which most people would consider relatively slow. My name's Dr Gareth Davies. I'm a consultant in emergency medicine at the Helicopter Emergency Medical Service in London. And my job is to go to simple road traffic accidents that occur every day, but sadly end up in people who are badly injured and sometimes fatally injured. Seatbelts are really effective for safety devices. They work for all sorts of vehicle users and all sorts of impact types. But they're especially effective in frontal impacts. We've recently done some research for the post office where we crashed one of their standard delivery vans travelling at 30 miles per hour into the side of a truck. We deliberately didn't put the seatbelt on the dummy. So the dummy stopped in a vastly reduced stopping distance, experiencing huge forces compared to those he would have experienced if he'd worn a seatbelt and stopped in the larger distance of the van. Because he didn't wear a seatbelt, this was a real person, we would have seen really significant injuries, perhaps even death. We break that crash down into three distinct phases. The first one, people often believe they can stop themselves. But sadly, they have no chance of resp responding to it. It happens in the blink of an eye, and there is nothing that they can do to prepare themselves or stiffen up for the crash. Literally, in the beat of a heart, the event will be over. The second stage is when you impact the steering wheel. At that point, you're completely flying free within the vehicle, and that impact is going to hurt. A really important point to remember is that although your car is fitted with an airbag, that airbag is effectively a supplementary restraint. It's designed to work with the seatbelt. It isn't designed to work on its own. If you're not wearing a seatbelt, it will offer perhaps some protection in some crash types, but nothing like the levels you're going to need to prevent serious or life-threatening injury. It's during this second crash where the patient's head is coming into contact with the windscreen, their chest is coming into contact with the steering wheel, and it's at this stage the patient's beginning to receive their injuries. The third stage is when that injury can become life-threatening, where you see the internal organs tear away from the structures within the body. In the chest, the heart and the lungs are coming forward towards the steering wheel, and it's at this stage they're being pierced and torn by the fractured ribs, and the simple impact of the heart stretching forward is literally tearing a hole uh, in the, the main vessel of the, uh, uh, of the heart, the aorta. Had the driver we'd just seen been wearing a seatbelt, would have seen a really different outcome. Firstly, he would have been connected to the vehicle really early on. So rather than the vehicle stopping and then him hitting the inside, as the vehicle slowed down, he's connected to the vehicle through his seatbelt. So he slows down with the vehicle over all that time and distance.
Now sure, the bits inside him, his internal organs, are also being restrained, but they've got all that extra time and distance to change velocity over, which really significantly reduces the forces and means that we really don't see anything like the injuries at these sorts of speeds for seat belted people. For people who don't wear a seat belt, it's crazy. It's an event that will take their life from them and by just one simple application, two seconds of putting a seatbelt on, that same crash can just result in a bent car and perhaps some bruising to the chest, but they won't lose their lives. And people think it will never happen to them, but sitting here on the helipad, we know today it will happen to someone.